During the 18th century in England, uh, you could certainly tell important people, in, particularly in engravings, um, because they would be wearing these elaborate wigs, white powdered wigs, long-haired wigs with curls on them. And they were popular with ministers, uh, professors at Oxford, um, judges, um, people in parliament would wear these elegant wigs. They were obviously made by hand, made directly for an individual, usually using some human hair, but also some horse hair. And there are quite a number of examples existing in England, um, but there aren't really a lot of examples here in the States. And there aren't a lot of, of examples in the States that we know exactly who the wig was made for and who wore it. And we're pretty lucky because we have Reverend Buell. He was the third minister. He was a minister for about 50 years here in East Hampton at the Presbyterian Church. We have his wig, uh, which came to us in the 1930s. Uh, we knew it was important. We didn't know quite how important it was until some years ago uh, we got a call from Colonial Williamsburg from their wig maker's shop that they were trying to find an American wig worn by an American. And we had one. Uh, they thought it was possibly one or two or three in the country. Uh, sent it down to them and they made a reproduction. And then the illustration that you can look at, it, you have in the foreground on the left-hand side, that shows you the original wig that Reverend Buell wore. There are three paintings in the existence, 18th century portraits, that show him in his wig. And I'm holding the wig that was made in the wig shop, which is a copy of what Reverend Buell's wig originally looked like based on our original wig and the three paintings that are known to have been done in the late 18th century of Reverend Buell. So it's pretty groovy, pretty amazing. Um, who would have expected that we'd have such a rare feature in our historical society collections that there weren't, aren't very many other ones in existence?